Many people are making efforts to conserve water, but there is a downside. Those savings are translating into higher water bills. Anyone violating the new law could be fined up to $1,000. The ban affects 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th Street from South St. James to San Carlos Street. Students and faculty at San Jose State joined together to welcome back alumnus Ted Fullwood Tuesday night. They were celebrating the opening of his gallery, Imaginary Confidants. Hand-built ceramics and sculptures made of pipe cleaners were just some of the pieces found at the Imaginary Confidants exhibition opening Tuesday in the Art Department Gallery. Before the big unveiling, the Art Department held a lecture where Ted Full would discuss the inspiration for his art. And coming to San Jose State was rebirth number two. And then, I, then, then it all just congealed the gel, then I go, okay, this is what the bliss is. It all adds up. The Natalie and James Thompson Art Gallery is on the first floor of the art building. Director Joe Farb Hernandez is glad to have such a hardworking and inspiring artist be a part of San Jose State. I just hope they're really inspired by him, you know, by how he has approached how he works, by the scale of his work, by the fact that he works in different kind of media, the fact that he's making forms that are just his own, you know, it's not derivative at all. The San Jose-based artist and alum showcased his colorful, hand-built ceramics that varied from figurative to abstract pieces. Spectators were mesmerized by his vibrant use in colors and wild imagination portrayed through pipe cleaners. You never see this kind of stuff out in the world uh, at all. I mean, you see sculptures every once in a while and bronze sculptures, whatever, but pipe cleaners, that's, that's far out, man. That's far out. Although Ted Fullwood declined to be interviewed, he did explain his inspiration for using pipe cleaners, stating it came after teaching kids art classes. He became hooked on the material. The public can now view Fullwood's art pieces daily until May 15th. Traffic conditions in downtown San Jose can be dangerous for pedestrians and bicyclists alike. With high-speed traffic, buses and cars merging across the bike lanes, cyclists are forced to merge into adjacent traffic. Rather than face danger in the street, at least 19% of cyclists are riding on the sidewalks, according to a study from City Hall. So, to protect pedestrians, San Jose instituted a bike ban on sidewalks, effective last month. To identify a location or um, a number of streets to focus on for some kind of ordinance or some kind of educational program for bicycling on sidewalk to try to get people to use the street or walk their bike instead. Anyone violating the law can be fined up to $1,000. The ban affects 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th streets from St. John South to San Carlos streets. The sidewalks on San Fernando Street are off limits from Derridon Station to 11th Street. The bike ban is the city's effort to keep people safe and yet not many cyclists are aware of the law. I think it's pretty good. Uh, we do have a lot of bike lanes that are available to bicyclists um, on this street, so they should be utilized. Police are enforcing the ban as they hand out information to cyclists, while signs can also be found throughout downtown streets. In San Jose, Jennifer Gonzalez, Update News. Inside the SGSU Art Gallery, some personal stories are being revealed. What it's like to live with obsessive compulsive disorder. Photographer and MFA student Dan Fenstermacher is presenting the struggles in an intimate way. Photographs. It's not just about being clean and organized. It can be very debilitating. He wants to expose OCD in its true form. And there's a lot of amazing people, as the ones pictured in here, that have really overcame their demons and their troubles with OCD. And it's really inspired, inspiring. And it's really inspired me to share my story. In the U.S. alone, more than 3 million people have OCD. But less than 10% are in treatment. One of those being treated is the photographer himself. I'm no longer embarrassed about OCD. I'm no longer ashamed of like the scars on my back from the anxiety from scratching. So it's been really freeing and uh, kind of therapeutic for myself. Spencer Mocker feels the need to contradict misleading stereotypes. He asked his subjects six questions to understand their anxieties. I'm really trying to show an authentic, genuine persona to people that have OCD. Not just somebody that cleans their hands or checks their locks, but other issues like, you know, aversion to noises or perfectionism or worry about their pets. Fenstermacher hopes that his efforts to show the real challenges of OCD will help people with the disorder. If you or anyone you know is struggling with OCD, check out the International OCD website. 
On campus, Jennifer Gonzalez, Update News. The Supreme Court decision has capped a case that has haunted Live Oak High School for more than five years. It began in 2010 when four students chose to wear flag-adorned shirts during a Cinco de Mayo celebration. Administrators worried the American flag symbols worn on a day of Mexican pride could instigate violence on campus. So they ordered the students to turn their shirts inside out or go home. The administrators could have done many different things that day. And in retrospect, I think the administrators uh, believe that they probably could have handled it a little bit different. This week's Supreme Court ruling leaves intact a federal appeal, allowing administrators the right to take away free speech from students if it threatens student safety. No students agreed to appear on camera, but some told us they have moved past the incident and have made public this motto. United at the roots, we are different branches of the same tree. What the students decided to do last year, four years after the events took place, is they decided to take that motto that they had created in 2010 and display it for the world to see. Superintendent Bertondo says he's proud of the advancement the students have made since the flag controversy and won a YMCA award earlier this year. Live Oak has been recognized for the strong role students took to build a community that promoted cultural identity. In Morgan Hill, Jennifer Gonzalez, Update News.